There are two chakras above the head, the 113th and 114th. It is well known they are not perceivable by our mortal eyes alone. They can only be seen by and through the perspective of spirit itself, which can be recognized by a resplendent vantage point that is afforded to the devotee. These are luminous balls of light directly above the human form. Through the elucidation of this vision, I'm hoping the aspirant can become aware that at this point, one is surrounded by a thousand eyes that are not born or noticed by the physical organ of sight. Recognize that in the beginning, the power of this vision cannot be grasped because the moment you notice it, it is withdrawn. To reiterate, these chakras can't be perceived by the sense organs, but only by the spirit of the individual that is merging with the unknown. For one to immerse oneself within this divination may seem impossible, yet it will be processed through the five senses to be alchemized by one's devotion to the goal at hand. To further expand upon these truths, See it this way, I'm attempting to allow the perceiver to beckon their doings to realize the abstract not doings of these principles, so as to ascend upon the worldly process of what is impossible to be noticed by the fixation of a normal state of consciousness. Through the delivery of this discourse, my aim is to bring clarity to that which cannot be clear until it is seen. But within the process of your own life, you, the devotee, will be left with a wondrous quandary of mysterious integration. The 113th chakra is the size of a small melon, and the one above that is a bit smaller than a tennis ball. Yet above this is a droplet of light that resembles the power of a hook, electrically attracted to the heavenly process. This energetic endeavor will invariably open one's bones that stretch the ligaments and tendons to become born of fire, yet nothing is consumed within those flames. By virtue of this, the droplets of nectar from heaven manifest the golden armor of the energy body and of the warrior's fascial net that reveals the descending force which pulls upon the flesh to illuminate the true nature of that individual's devotion. These droplets resemble a plumb line, not too dissimilar to weighted jewelry that appear to the seer as filaments of light which follow the descending process of one's flesh. Born within this being is the celestial process that enamors the heart to be righteous upon its path. It is not dissimilar to being immersed in golden honey. As you ascend, it descends. As you descend, it ascends. As you begin to float beyond the refuge of your physical form, what is left are the plumb lines of the planet to reveal your celestial journey. Here you will find the sun and the moon, which reside within the midst of your physical body and which will illuminate within you the hallways of your own lights. These pathways show themselves also in between your hands as a mist, revealing itself as moonlight, the place you will enter at the moment of your death and which will instruct the heart to recognize one's spirit body. At this point, it is of utmost importance not to fear but to be consumed by that very presence of white luminescence that will become as bright as a thousand suns. Here is where the doorway of your future resides. For at that moment, if you do not have detachment, you may be consumed by dreams and nightmares that will throw you back to that which you have so diligently trained to leave. 